right, all right. Wednesday, hump day. Who needs a mound visit? Breaking our day. Thanks for joining us again. Case, what's up? We got a uh, good good show on tap today. Yes, we do. Um, a lot. A lot is up. That You were one all right short of Matthew McConaughey there on that one. You were t- <laughs> two all rights. I'll have to tell that story, man. I did get to meet him. Oh. If you look at my Instagram, I think there's a picture of us when he came through Texas. What a legend. And there was a, there was a, little, there was a little bet going on who could make him say it. And well, your kid right here got him to say it. You know? So everybody was like, holy shit, man. It was cool. It was a cool moment. But uh, yeah, I got to meet him. Great guy. He's the man. Awesome actor. Yeah. Yeah, just motivational speaker. Loves life, man. That guy, pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we got him on the show. A mound visit that might be a four hour mound visit right there if we had him on our show it's, it, it's, That's another story. it's funny because i probably mentioned it at you know way too many times but david wright is my guy so like if we had him but like right under that is matthew mcconaughey <laughs> so like he's like 1a you know what i mean so i'm gonna try to come through for just you man fanboy and hey, right here all right yeah uh, no we got a lot to cover man uh hall of fame weekend mm-hmm. went well the prime dog and and rolling there's always amazing speeches and motivational stuff. Um, but I wanted to kick off something that really kind of maybe two things, but they're on my mind yeah. at this mound. There's always a lot to spew. But um, something I got to do this weekend was for my buddy Billy Staples, who's an unbelievable teacher and the best scholars is his foundation. And I was there this weekend with my parents. Omar Vizquel was there. Larry Holmes was there among Legend. A, a slew of, you know, ex-ball players, father-son combos. It was cool. And it, and, it, and the popularity is growing of it to put these kids through college. Um, it, it's incredible, right? When, yeah. you, when, you, when, you, when you elevate somebody who doesn't come from a charmed background, we all need help, um, but we are, uh, are there to help raise money and, and these kids get through college and go on to be better people, better citizens, and the give back. Even former kids who got scholarships were there oh, and that's so giving nice. back to the program. It was it was unbelievable. It was a lot of emotion. And for my buddy, Billy Staples, I wanted to give him a shout out. And here's what we do. One of the things that I do to help donate, and I got Sean Casey and some of my boys. I'm trying to get all my, my boys uh, in the fraternity here uh, to give back. Getting all this fan mail, right? We get all this fan mail that we never know what to do with. It's hard to sign that much mail. People think like, oh, how hard is it? Well, when you get an influx and flood mm. of thousands of cards that you people want you to sign, I've even had people who stick a check in there, $5. Hey, thanks. We want to give you something to sign. Your I don't charge kids, even if it's a, a, a collector. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want money for signing my name. Yeah. It takes two seconds. But I did come up with the idea. I said, hey, Billy. He was here visiting me. I said, hey, Billy, look at this. I go, what if I could get these people to donate to, even if it's five bucks for signing autographs to your charity? He goes, you would do that? I go, yeah. I said, you just got to get the fan mail and direct it. So it's an excuse for us to get together. He gets all my fan mail and all these guys' fan mail. Sean Casey now. Nice. Fan mail goes to the to the, to the charity. And, you know, if people make a donation, we sign. They could put 50 cards in there and we sign them. Oh, that's awesome. And they, Billy and I to do so. It's a he. He said me individually made, I don't know, between over the years eight and ten thousand dollars just from signing cards that go to these kids. So it's pretty cool. So I made donation of rock and ball wine, some of my books. You know, just trying to help out any way I can. And it was cool to see the guys there. We all sign autographs for fans and people who come and donate and auction items. Right, there's always a good silent auction of uh, some some pretty cool stuff. But Omar Vizquel was there, man. It was cool to see. He was, uh, yeah, he's probably one of the best fielders of all time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he was my locker mate in in Texas, and he was actually in better shape than I was as (laughs) an old man. He's still in good shape, bro. So it was good to catch up with him and, uh, you know, do do, do the give back, which I know a lot of players do, and we're talking about awards and Cy Youngs and this and that, but the Roberto Clemente Award, uh, which I was honored to be a nominee Mm -hmm. at one point. It's probably one of the one of the better things that I feel good about, um, you know, because we, we all look at like, oh, we make all this money, we get to live a dream, but do you get to kick back, you know? And with a nickname like Grilled Cheese, I was always trying to do something, you know, teamed up with Feeding America, yeah. and did some stuff. But like I said, there's so many guys that are giving to their own charities and own causes, and it's it's pretty cool. So that's uh, 
that'll be something we can recognize too, man, because it's cool to see what these guys are doing out there. It's a it, it's a um, it's a cause that hits home for me too, because my mom does the same sort of thing. Um, she runs a non for profit uh, or non profit in in Ithaca called Golden Opportunity, and they provide like tutoring and 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 help for kids who aren't able to you know to get that um, themselves, and and it's free free tutoring after school and you know they provide care for kids after school who can't afford it so it's that sort of thing is is something that um uh you know my family has experience with and it's it's something really cool to to see you know ex-ball players and and anyone trying to give back because you know it's a, yeah. such an important cause so I wish there was a way to like conform it like because there seems like there's people doing the same causes yeah. but just a way to funnel the money where it needs to go, right? Everybody knows we all we all need money, and money is a resource, just like breathing air, and yeah. water, and everything. You need enough money, just enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Congratulations to the billion dollar winner out in California, Powerball. <laughs> I was hoping to get a slice. I was passing through Harrisburg uh, to get to this charity event, so I was like, wouldn't that be funny if I won? And I, I think the Mega Millions is like eight fifty. You're not too shabby. I take the fifty and be okay with it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Because who really gets to spend it, right? You don't get to take it with you, so yeah. you might as well do some good stuff with it. And sound like uh, we are the world. Can we keep we are the world? <laughs> like a better place. Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie and all that. You were probably even old enough to remember. When, that. when was that? Oh, you're gonna have to cue that up, dude. Oh. We are the world was like big in the '80s, bro. Okay, yeah, that I wasn't there yet. We are. The- I wasn't even a thought. I wasn't a thought yet. So you that's know crazy. That song? Yeah, oh, I, know I know the song. song. I know the song for sure. Uh, yeah. Wow, we're getting real uh, introspective here at the beginning of this. Well, it sounds like it, dude. This is yeah. what you can talk about anything. I know <laughs> get their news on MLB.com. They don't need us, right? We're just we're just remixing it here. Mm-hmm. They want to get the news and maybe catch up and feel like they're just eavesdropping in on. The shit that's on our mind, bro. <laughs> that's right. Well, speaking of uh, some of the stuff that's on our mind, I don't know. The trade deadline has been on my mind nonstop, and I'm sure it has for you too because we've been talking about it nonstop. But um, I think it's five days away now. I mean, we're July 26th on Wednesday here. August 1st is the trade deadline. Crazy time of year. Um, and I think one of the things to, to look at is, you know, For me, it's always interesting to see the teams, you know, it it makes or breaks your season and it tells the fans who are watching what this team really thinks of their current squad and what, where they think they can go further on in the season. So, you know, there's a lot of that's going on right now in the front offices and, and, and uh, with the manager going like, Hey man, are we still in it this year? We put, we, we cashing in Mm -hmm. chips all in. Are Are we shooting for next year? You know? Yeah. And I think the biggest the biggest thing to talk about we've talked about it for the last few episodes but let's get it out of the way now and then we could we could move on yes it's our our, <laughs> our patented otani segment before the deadline but um well the buckos gave him a reason to say hey man the buckos put a put a beating on him i thought they were gonna i called a no hitter i was like <laughs> man I it might be a no hitter in his his uh thing and the opposite of that man and he got touched up a little bit but shows that he was human it's yep. You know, Tani's great, but he's human, and that happens. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like you said, go ahead with your Otani well, claim. With the red, are the Reds calling him right now? The Reds. Uh, <laughs> it's. it's I, I think my Reds take might have been a little, a little outlandish, but I think the, um, the, the question I wanted to ask you because this is something yeah, I've been wrestling with dinner. myself, huh? They, De La Cruz is taking him out to dinner to try to get him to come to Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. On his language barrier. I'd love to sit on that interpreter's conversation. That would be a five-hour dinner. I know. They'd have to have Ipe, uh, Otani's tra- – that guy's like a – he's like a, a celebrity in himself. Best job, best job ever he probably has right, right there. I know. I, Otani says they spend every day together. So it's – I mean, what a, what a charmed life that must be too. It's pretty cool. Um, but I want to ask you – when you look at the Angels season, I mean they're I believe they're at this point four back of a uh, of a wild card right now. Few they're two games over 500, so they're still or yeah, so they're still you know they're still fighting. And it, and it goes without saying that um, excuse me, three and a half back of a wild card. Reds are coming over. Some Reds players are coming to Anaheim. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
Maybe that's what's happening. Maybe you had it backwards. It's the other way around. Um, the other way around. Santa Cruz to the Angels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they they're ever letting him walk out of their building, but but I think the the thing that the thing that I wanted to ask you is with the Angels being in the position that they are, do you still think there's any way that he gets traded or do you think that the Angels have kind of already made up their mind because I know that we have a couple days left, but do you think they've already made up their mind in the sense that we're keeping him this is the team we're rolling with? I think I think unless somebody comes up with a with a futuristic ridiculous thing where they're going to throw him three or four years for three or four hundred million dollars, something that's asinine but not a ten or twelve year deal, I think they're and again I don't it's unprecedented stuff so they're going to have to some team is going to have to pull something ridiculous because I mean deservedly so do I think he's going to get traded I have no idea. Mm. I have no idea. Do I, on my honest opinion, I have no idea. I'm not going to try to deduce or I'm just going to, I'm watching the reality TV show. As I always say, yeah. we're watching the greatest TV reality TV show right now. The, the, the climax is coming and even there's going to be deals after the trade deadline. Yep. You know, just, it makes whether or not these guys are able to make the playoff run. Cause like I said, we got Matt stairs in Detroit in 2006. He's always my uh, example of this. We acquired him after the trade deadline, but he wasn't able to play. And he should have been. We were so upset for him. Mm. We wanted him. There's a great clubhouse guy, unbelievable player uh, to have on your team. And um, he wasn't able to be in the playoff hunt with us. And But he but he contributed, and we wanted to take him with us. Yeah. So that's just, you know, the way the, the baseball rules are. And uh, there'll be deals after. But, it, again, like you said, could be for – the projected season after or just a temporary fix to try to keep you in the hunt, you know? I think the the interesting thing, and to kind of answer my own question almost, is like when you look at the package that it would take, because I, I, the only thing I can really compare this to is when Juan Soto got traded to the Padres and the package that came back was pretty much all of San Diego's farm system. So, it, you know, I, it would take something similar to that, in my opinion, to get this deal done, multiple top 100 level prospects but is a team really willing to in a sense mortgage their future on two months of Otani granted he's the greatest he might be the most talented player to ever touch a baseball but it's you know when you're talking about the future of your organization that's a tough thing to give up right here's, here's the deal bro just like a pitcher I can speak at this time yeah. because I don't know the front office and how they think and what information they have on a guy that they that they're watching yeah that could be the next big prospect right. for the next draft year or two. There's teams that got like when a pitcher says, "Oh, you're one or two pitches into it, right?" Yeah, yeah. Maddox probably. Has. I know how I'm going to set this guy up and all this. So organizations probably have all those moves. I know they got all these boards with magnets of guys' names on there playing, you know, stratomatic baseball, right? And going to win a World Series. Whether look what the Houston Astros did, right? People said in Sports Illustrated, oh, these guys are going to play. I remember when they were lost 100 games. Mm-hmm. And look what they went up to did. So you talk about strategy and strategizing for the next, the future. Yeah. Teams are doing that. So we're looking at the immediacy of now, right, yep. as, as fans and as our, our pocket. We have no freaking clue what organizations are going to do. Yeah. So they have scenarios and setups and these these conversations that agents and – you know, general managers are, are having in the front office for, for projecting of this year, who's going to win the 2023 World Series mm-hmm. and who's going to be contenders over the next three to four or five years. Right. And be a good team like Houston's turned out to be top tier organization in the AOS. So who knows, bro? I know I know that sounds so like like we're I'm killing the killing buzz, killing the conversation of this answer, but we don't know. Yeah. You really don't know of what these guys are doing. So, because because there's there's rent a player, mm-hmm. right? Try to go for it now, and we're one and done. Right. And shot one shot. We, you know, shoot our best best out, and if it's not good enough, then we got to wait another few years or something to build up. These smaller market teams, right, don't have the the, the ability to to pull those triggers, man. So yeah, it's, it's going to be the same people. It's going to be the Yankees, the Dodgers. 
San Francisco, you know, all the teams, everybody's like, okay, you know, if you're a Pirate fan like me, and we're, you know, I mean, I'm rooting for the Blue Jays, but how much money do you got to pay in that well, division? A ton. A ton. I think those are the teams that will pro- – the teams you mentioned are probably going to be the, the big players in free agency. But I think the interesting thing to look at with the trade deadline is, you know, someone I think who would cons- – a team who would consider a move like trading for a Shohei Otani, I've got to think is a team that, you know, hasn't been to the postseason or is starving for a playoff berth like that or maybe hasn't had that sort of success in a long time. And the few teams that come to mind would be like the Orioles and the Diamondbacks because, um, you know, it's been a few years since those two teams have been consistently, you know, in the playoffs. It's been a while for the Orioles. And they, I mean, we, we talked about it on the last episode too. You know, they're not a cute story anymore. This is a good team. This is a first place team who caught the, I mean, they've caught the Rays. Um, and we talked yep. about even with the Rays, when they were like 30 and nine or whatever, they were only six yeah. games up of the Orioles. So the Orioles have just played incredible baseball all year long and, and they've got the prospect capital to do it. Do they want to do that? I don't know. Um, because it's like you said, um, you talked about the Astros and the it's, it's those top tier teams who have built up a farm system that consistently churns out quality major league players and guys who come up to the big leagues and are immediately impactful. You know, that's not – you don't get that by trading your farm away for two months of, of Shohei Otani, no matter how great and how, you know, incredible of a player he is. And I think, you know, it's going to take a team that, that maybe is desperate um, and wants to, you know, hold on to that. Now you build a, core. a team has to have a core yes. of their play, and then you build around the core, yep. right? And that's how you win. Yep. So. Uh, it's no secret since the beginning of time that any good general manager, you know, Dave Dombrowski, um, I played under him a few times, mm-hmm. but guy has a pretty good clue and is, sure. is always in the fight. So there are general managers who know how to win and pull the triggers right, um, short term and long term. Mm-hmm. It'll, it'll be interesting, like I said, man. I, I'm, I'm redundant in my statement here, but mm-hmm. we're watching and the pole position is continually changing um, with, with, the, the excitement. And as a player, when you show up and you're in the fight, man, you know, I'm looking at the standings again, too. Like, and again, uh, Toronto, not con- terribly far out of it, six and a half games, but they get hot. You know, their last 10, they're five and five. What if they were eight and two? Yeah, right. You know, a little different position. Um, you can say that about Cleveland. They're they're three out. Yep. They're five and five in their last 10. Can they catch the Twinkies? Yep. Uh, on top of their division. Um, Houston and Texas, I mean, they're going to battle it out right to the end, I think. And you, you said Anaheim, they're seven and three. Well, they're going to have to continue to do those six and four, seven and threes to get to the top. Maybe have a, a have a good run where they're nine and one or ten and zero. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and then it changes the it changes the dynamic. Man. There's Some still teams, two months left. You're right. I mean, there's the right time. So pulling that trigger, changing the chemistry, pulling a guy like like I said, people look at like who you acquire. I don't know. Let's just say Mike Trout's good friend gets traded. You know, he's, he's his his breakfast guy sure. or guy that he rolls with or somebody on the team. It, it changes, man. It hurts when you lose a family member. It's a baseball family. You, you're you're closer to your teammates, and, and you pull that out. That could deflate a guy that is one of your guys. It, it, and so, just as much as acquiring a guy, the deflation too. It, it, you don't know how that that changes. And like I said, people don't like to use that word. Team chemistry sure. is. is a, it's a real thing, man. So how do you compartmentalize real... that as a as a player when you're in a clubhouse and you know you're you know your team is making moves for the right reasons, but you're losing a guy who, like you said, maybe you go to breakfast or dinner with every day, or this this is your locker mate who you hang out with. How do you compartmentalize that as a player and focus on the task at hand, which is winning? Well, you got to have a short memory yeah. with everything, because you can't you have to get over stuff really quickly as a player and you have to be healthy, selfish um, to be accountable for what you have to do. But, you know, there's, there are team psychologists and people that, if it's that hurtful, Mm -hmm. whatever we all, we all have different needs, right? It's it's real. And, uh, but like I said, we, we, we almost glorify athletes to the point of going like, 
They're not human beings. They're real human beings with real emotions, real feelings. And it hurts, man, when you lose a game or you publicly embarrass yourself by not doing your job. You mm -hmm. let the city down, the team down, your teammates down, your family down. It hurts. And there was an article. I'm trying to remember what it was in. Uh, I read a while back. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was just about how some guys fall victim to the bottle or, mm -hmm. you know, other, other modes of like trying to sulk and, you know, it's hard to go to your teammate who's sitting there and you almost like embarrass you. Like, you almost like you feel like your teammates hate you, even though mm -hmm. they don't. Uh, but they're upset. Like, come on, man, you know, you know, we're all rooting for each other, but, um, but yeah, this thing of, of adding and taking away it, 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 it there's dynamics that are unspoken. Um, or that fans would even really understand and know about. And that's it's it's a perfect segue to the next topic that I wanted to speak about because um, I was I read a quote from uh, one of the relievers on my on my Mets, David Robertson, and he's going to be one of the you know if the Mets don't get something together, I mean he's the first one out the door. He's had a, an unbelievable season, and you know relievers are they fly off the shelves fast during the trade deadline, yep. so it makes sense. But he said you know they asked him about you know what are your thoughts about, you know, potentially going to a winning team, whatever it may be. And he just said, I'm not excited about it. You know, it is what it is, but I'm not, you know, I'm not necessarily looking forward to it. And I wanted to get your opinion on that, especially as a former reliever yourself, because David Robertson is someone who's, you know, he's been traded at multiple trade deadlines as a, as a quality reliever because teams always need more. Um, but it really brings up the point of what you were saying too, with the, the human aspect of this, that, you know, yes, we as fans talk about this and we're trading players and it's and it's like, oh, we're getting yeah, this. I got 12 jerseys, bro. <laughs> right. And it's like we're getting this we're getting this piece back. But it, like we're trading human beings and these human beings have families who are in cities yes. that don't want like talk a little bit about that. And can you can you kind of empathize with yeah, David talk, Robinson well, uh, on that? Absolutely. Um, moving your family, especially when you have kids. Uh, very tough. I, I'll just speak about the one trade that stung the most was going from Pittsburgh to Anaheim. Mm. Uh, I just had my, my uh, little guy, my youngest son, was born, uh, you know, only a, only a few months, several months old, and I didn't get to see him for months, mm. you know. So uh, being out in the West Coast because uh, my son was in school, started the kindergarten. My oldest son was in kindergarten. So there's just things in family ripping apart. Moving is one of the top. Uh, stresses in life. Yeah. And sometimes I've moved four times in a season. When you go to spring training, go from your home where you reside to spring training, that's one move. Then you go to your home city. Then if you get traded and you move back home, that's a lot of moving around. Yeah. Right? So uh, to, to stay focused and to stay locked in and to do your job, it's just what you have to do. And players, I'll go back to the DeGrom interview when he's crying. Mm -hmm. We love to do what we love to do. And we would pack our bags and go anywhere, but getting getting the the support system behind you, and that's why you have to have a good family and a good wife and a good this and a good that, yeah. because it's a lot. And I think, you know, for me, I, I was traded from being even Detroit to Colorado, um, and I was actually kind of happy about it because I knew the, fa the fans they booed me out of Detroit, and I kind of got a fresh start. So. Uh, I looked at it like, oh, okay, we're going to start new here. Nobody knows me here, and we're going to go. And I and I enjoyed it because it was it was a new beginning. Yeah. Um, but you know, if David Wright doesn't want to necessarily publicly said that he doesn't want to be traded, it's probably for good reason. Yeah. There might be some he feels comfortable. He's in a routine. He wants to finish out the good season and disrupting that routine. Which once you're in it, man, and he's having a good season, that is disruption. Yeah. You know. You have disruption in your day, right? So they get in there, we mess up your desk, bro, or we start fudging with your computer and screwing up shit. Right. It's gonna be like, wait, dude, it's gonna it's gonna ruin your day. Could it possibly ruin your week? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So same thing, humanizing the player. Yeah, everybody says the excuse. Well, look at all the money they make. There's no problems. All right, money might not be one of them, but there are other things that come with being a major league player that people don't see behind the scenes, man. That's a really good point. And you, you're, I mean, you're setting me up perfectly here. Cause you mentioned the yeah. video getting upset and, and there was another, uh, we, it happened a few days, uh, last week, but we didn't 
we had had our show already. So I wanted to ask you about, um, I don't know if you got the chance to see Jared Kalenix's, um, po- uh, it was a pregame interview that he talked about, at, uh, that he was answering questions during after the news broke that he is going to be out for the foreseeable future now with a fractured foot um, that he got, that he sustained that injury kicking a water cooler after, during a game. And, and it's, you know, you look at that at fate and you're like, oh, geez, like, you know, what an idiot. But, but I, I, I want to, you know, he was very emotional during his press conference and you could tell. And one of the things that he said is he was, you could just tell that he was the most disappointed in himself that he let his team down. And I think that was the, the main message that he tried to get across. But I wanted to ask you as someone who's been, you know, in clubhouses and, and all that. But, you know, when something like this happens, what is that vibe in the clubhouse? Are people, you know, do you feel bad and it's just a young kid who made a mistake and he's a fierce competitor and can you kind of, can you re- recognize that as a player or, you know, are you kind of just like, what an idiot, you know, this is someone who can help us down the stretch or is it a little bit of both? What is that like? No, uh... I think your microphone got, Sorry. well, there we go. Now we're back. <laughs> an, ad, an ad came up on my, Thanks. So luckily, I had wouldn't be a mound a, visit without a uh, technical uh, difficulty. And we had a fan run across the field right there. <laughs> <laughs> Streaker. Um, no, I, I won't mention his name. It was a pitcher um, in 2014. We were making a playoff run, and he was um, had a had a night out that he probably shouldn't have had. Wound up doing something silly and and uh, jump jumped in the 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 bay or whatever you call it and we were in st pete Mm -hmm. playing the tampa bay rays and um he wound up getting hurt and um you know he had to get in front of the team and he was in tears because he was embarrassed that i did some stupid decision could have cost us you know somebody that we were we were account of counting on really and so when you do silly things hey man emotions and again humanizing it is it is it dumb yes but you have to make decisions but anytime you make that in your free will as a human being if you make a right decision wrong decision you got to be accountable for it right and yeah and I think that's why he's emotional because it's like when you monday morning quarterback yourself going like what was i thinking you're caught up in a moment you want to show people you feel like you let your team down and that's the pressure man that is the pressure of dealing with failure right yeah and and it's easier to have those outbursts of emotion. It seems it seems more fitting than dealing with success. Some guys don't know how to deal with success, and it's scary. Mm. But there's not like I'm not punching a water cooler when I have success. I'm punching it when I fail. Yeah. Right. Um, and I remember it was Carlos Gomez is one of the ones too. Man, he was a hothead and then smashing water coolers, but he did it with his bat. You can still get hurt there you go. if you're throwing equipment and doing that. Uh, but yeah, man. Anytime you you have reactions to it, it, it it shows you care. But you can maybe do it a different way without hurting yourself. It sucks. Yeah, and I'm sure that I mean he's young. You know, I think he's only 23, 24. So he'll learn from that hopefully, and 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 move past that. But I, I to to move to a lighter note before we get to to some of the meat and potatoes here the, to end this show. But. It, have, are there any funny stories of uh, of guys losing it in the dugout before, uh, but and maybe not getting injured? Any anything that you can think of? I'm, I mean, you've been in a zillion big league uh, dugouts, so uh, you know it's funny. It's like one of those things where where you see people slip on ice or you know fall down. Yeah, you don't. As want. long as they don't get injured, you can laugh. Yeah. And the same thing is like when you lose it. I know guys have chuckled. I I got I can't remember where it was. Oh yeah, oh, I'm sure I you got, do. You have any? Oh, I did. Well, me personally. <laughs> Yes, I think I was. Uh, I gotta remember rewind. I think I was with. I know it was against the A's. Okay. And I and I was smashing chairs and just whatever. And I could see some of the guys trying to hold back, chuckling, because I just was like destroying everything in in, in my path. And uh, yeah, it was it was kind of tough, but you know, the the one that sticks out in my mind, I remember that I laughed and I wasn't there for it was. Uh, I saw a big poppy smash in oh the bullpen, the, the phone in the the, the dugout. Mm-hmm. So, were you in the club? I'm trying to remember when this was. Were you in the dugout when uh, he was on the, uh, Sean Rodriguez on the Pirates was punching, going at it with Rocky with the water cooler? 
I'm trying oh, to. Oh yes, I wasn't there. Um, no, that was after. Oh my god, that's another yeah. classic one. How about in the minor yeah. leagues? I I, I got to imagine guys in the because there's even more. You talk about you know you're in the bigs like that's one thing. Obviously you want to stay there, but I got to imagine in the minor leagues there's like some of the freakouts well, are. As a pitcher, the one that made me chuckle was like you could strike somebody out, but it was more when bats actually broke. They don't break now anymore. They're using <laughs> something. That's why these balls are going out of stadiums. <laughs> Uh, it's a true pitcher's talk, but, uh, <laughs> no, when you could get in on a guy's kitchen and you just heard that crack, it was, it, the guys would go take their bat and just do more damage with it in the tunnel or whatever. And you'd chuckle, you would chuckle, be like, yes, that was like, that was pure alpha mailing somebody else. If you could, it was just a good feeling. It you must know? feel good. Yeah. I love was, that. But it's no different than a guy taking you deep and just feeling like, flipping it and i'm taking a slow jog like you know mm -hmm. it, it's it's that battle man mm -hmm. of where you're, you're like i'm out here and today's my day some days you're the bug and some days you're the windshield you know yep uh, absolutely yeah. well let's so that, it, it's it it's funny because you think about that whole uh you know it, it's a different energy too i'm sure at the at the uh the highest level you know, you think about like at playing little league or whatever, and you know, you, the first time you throw your helmet. I remember like the first time I got real mad, oh, like and yes, bro. Yeah, my son just had a tournament, and his coach, this coach of the opposing team, got out and he was throwing shit in the dugout, oh. and the coach went over. It's like a ten a.m. ten a.m. game, yeah. and the coach was like yelling at the kid, "You know better to do. Right. Don't do that. You don't do that. You don't. You don't act like that. Have you? You know, good character. You know who's watching. He's going through this whole thing, and he goes." Damn it! He's like, I was in a good mood. Like he went next level when we went on the kid because he's like, I don't want to yell at you. Right. We're winning. We're winning, and you're upset that you got out, and you look look like you're a selfish baby, you know. Oh, and this coach was going off. I was like, good for you, you know. But it's funny because there's there's 25, you know, sets of parents in the stands, so there's not that many many fans. Yeah. So you hear everything <laughs> the most because I'm like, oh man, this kid is really gonna you know feel, feel small after this coach yeah. is yeah the but he was right the coach is like man we're winning i'm sorry you didn't get a hit right to contribute but don't act the fool because everybody can hear you being a baby that you know make the adjustment mm -hmm. and don't embarrass yourself and don't hurt anybody else coaches or players that are in the dugout because that's where I've seen guys throw a helmet or something and oh, yeah. you know team it's like they want to fight each other because you're like dude you know you're gonna hurt me because you had a bad ab mm -hmm. you know go take your temper somewhere else and then come back and regroup man. yeah I, me I remember hearing uh one of my favorite guys to listen to talk about baseball trevor plouffe was talking about when he was in the twins dugout he threw a helmet and it hit justin morneau one of the veterans on the team in the foot and he said i will never forget or maybe it was michael Kadire, i can't remember one of the two and he said i will never forget the look that they gave me and and he's like i never did it again so it's wow. like yeah i i it makes sense. Um, but let's let's do a, a little fun activity here to end off the show because this yeah, is so this is something We're that I've been doing. Up. Our tech department stepped up here. Mm -hmm. We can. Uh, That's right. We're gonna. Freeze. I'll share my screen. So if you're just listening here, um, go ahead and head over to our YouTube side so you can check this out. We are gonna do the immaculate grid. Um, so I. What is this dude when did this start coming out because this is fairly new right it's, or no it's 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 pretty new um they actually just teamed up with baseball reference within the past few weeks so now it's gotten like a lot more um it's a lot more interactive too so you can you know immediately after you can check out you know um the, the percentage of people who guessed this person and this person and who the most popular guesses were and all that stuff so can you see my screen right now i'm sharing the grid yeah. Okay, beautiful. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to see, and, and we talked about it a little bit before we got on. Should we go for speed, or should we go for the most? There's a, I've, I honestly, truthfully, have never done this. Beautiful. No, you fucked it up. I didn't even pay attention. I'm just going to go. Okay. With <laughs> Let's just do it and get into it. Okay. Um, I'm not cheating, so if the people at home. Same here. If you haven't liked or subscribed to our page, do that, mm -hmm. because we're trying to uh, get more... Uh, of ourselves out there and john Deere, we're looking for sponsors or try to wear 
t-shirts out here. Hey, but I got to tell you, I want to talk about that real quick. Yeah. My friends with Relentless, man, if you haven't checked out their gloves, they I got met those guys mm. at the ABCA. And the only reason I'm bringing it up because it was a topic we didn't really cover today, just on the flair of, of you know, what, what players use. Yeah. Lindor made me think of it because I saw the thing where he's using some clear glove. Oh, yeah. He's so swaggy, man. He's so swaggy, yeah. Oh. So it made me think, though, relentless gloves and attire. Dude, if you haven't checked out their stuff, they're new on the scene, and it's hard to compete with Wilson and, and Rawlings, but their stuff is really good. I got two gloves from my kid, Ooh. and he loves them. They're, they're swaggy stuff, man. So check out Relentless's website. I want to give them a plug. But let's get into this right here. Beautiful. Okay, so where do we start first? Does anyone come? Because I've... I, I got two of them on top. The first two okay. uh, that come to mind is Zach Grinke okay. for Houston, Kansas City. Oh, can't type. Let's let's get in there. Zach Grinke. Yep. Boom, there we go. I've got one for get... Miami and Kansas City. Who are you thinking? The former guest, one of my favorite, my best yep. friends. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. We got to bring him up. Boom. There you go. Oh, one percent too. That's a good oh we love that. We love that. Okay. And you need a kid. All star you do that at the end. Let's do yeah, we'll go Kansas City all I mean there's a Bo Jackson. Was he an all star? Across the top. He was an all star with he's the only person to be an all star in both sports. Look at that. Boom. There you go. Three um, percent. Okay. Oh now we go. Kansas City. Who's the, uh... Houston and Oakland. The right fielder, I'm come to Ryan, the right fielder. He was on, Josh uh, Reddick. There you go. Yeah. I was just I'm thinking of Careless Whisper. I see I know the walkout songs. Josh Reddick. There we Oh, look at that must be a good. So you know all the walkout songs for these guys. That must be a um, um yeah, some cuz I you know, when you're in the bullpen you start going that's a great song. Ah, okay. All right. Marlins and A's. Jeez, am I don't know there. Hmm. Did we skip that? Come back. We'll come to back it? to that. I've got someone in mind, but maybe we could think of someone better. A's All Star. Oh, I'm thinking of a. I'm thinking of one right now. He's a former former reliever, so right up your alley. I, Eckersley. We could. Or I was thinking a, a, an even more recent guy. I was thinking Grant Balfour. Was he an All Star? Yeah. Let's try. Yeah, that. He was there. The thirteen. Maybe. Was he? The, he was there with you, I think. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Boom. Oh, look at that. Point uh, six. That's a good one. Now the Mets I could roll through because uh, I bet you could do this. So you could, you could use the same you can't use the same player for No, you can't use the same player for two, unfortunately. You could slide Bucky down. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm think okay, so for Mets All Star, I'm gonna get this one over with right away. Um and that's you know oh, there you they go. are right. We gotta get that. Gotta you have know. uh gotta have you Captain. Gotta, sure. I don't. I think you don't be able to talk that the whole show. You just be sitting there drooling. <laughs> yeah. I, after I woke up from passing out, or, yeah. I, or I, I would not talk and just let you have the, the conversation. <laughs> just let you go. That'd be something yeah. else. Um, all right, the Met. You'd be like uh, the kid in uh, Christmas uh, story. Oh yeah, where he right up, up against Santa. I don't know what to say? What do you want, kid? <laughs> yeah, that would be me, a hundred percent. All right, Mets Marlins. So uh, the Mets and Marlins could be the same one. I'm thinking for Marlins A's as well. I'm thinking because I know Starling Marte played for all three teams. Um, okay. Mets and Astros might be tough. So what what do we think? Should we? Jensen was not at a Marlin, was he? He played for a lot of teams, but I don't think he got. Who's this? The... I don't think Ricky Henderson played for the Marlins at all. Did he? He played for a lot of teams because I know he was. Hmm. I don't know I don't. if he played for the Marlins. Did he play for the Astros? No, I, I'm thinking. Maybe he did. No, he was Dodger. Oh, I don't know. I don't think he put. So I'm thinking of one. And the only reason I'm thinking of this is because I watched him not only pitch for the Spirit. Oh, Nolan Ryan for Houston and the Mets. Nolan Ryan. There you go. That's my hero. He's been sitting behind me. How can I not say my boy Nolan? Boom. Love that. Um, uh, okay. So we got Marlins A's and Marlins Mets. Now, since I have a deep um, understanding of the not only the major league roster for the Mets, but the minor league roster as well, 
and I live in Syracuse, so I've been to plenty of Syracuse Mets games. There's one player that's coming to mind. He's got one of the better names I've ever heard in baseball, and that is Jimmy Yacobonis. Ooh, let's see if I – there he is. Jimmy Yacobonis. <laughs> there we go. Get out of Not here. Not many people are going to get that one because I first watched him pitch – for the Marlins, and he's a side armor who in his, well, I mean, I guess he's still young. He's still in his prime, but he was throwing like 97 from right here. It was crazy to watch. Um, hasn't what, do had, we win? what do we win when you do this? What is um, it? You just get bragging rights? Yeah, somebody? we get bragging rights. We'll see how low our rarity score is, and then that'll be a. I feel like they need to monetize this. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, teaming up, they Event- sold – when they started, Somebody. they sold it to baseball reference. So now it's, um, I mean, they did their thing. Should we go with my Starling Marte pick? Yeah, go ahead. Boom. For sensitive time here. We're... Hey, that's not a bad rarity score. And I think we did that pretty quickly. So, yeah, look, you could see all the, oh, all the players that. now. These were the most popular answers. Jose Let's Reyes, see, right? Verlander. Very nice. Nice. Hey, that was That's a, good a great attempt. way to end out the show. Some of Big Buck, we did that pretty quick, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I would cheat off your paper, and you cheat off my paper. That's right. We, <laughs> a we team immaculate. That's actually the first team immaculate grid I've done. So, And I'm okay. pleasure to do that with my mountain On as a the, partner. Is it today, brother? Hey, this was a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, if you haven't listened to our show, this is your first one. Hopefully we've entertained you. We've brought you just a moment of your day to think about something else. That's what sports entertainment's all about. Darn right. We've got a great season going underway, 2023 season, lots happening. Uh, If we didn't cover a topic, you uh, want to join and and, and eavesdrop, drop on, drop us a comment. Mm -hmm. Drop a like, give us a thumbs down if we suck today, because sometimes that's why you have a mound visit. Make the damn pitch. Yep. We didn't do the come through. But, uh, you know, listen, man, we love our fans. We thank you for your time and uh, spending it with us. That's right.